So outside of two tech and two index, what advice should we be following? Number one, listen to everything that I tell you on the show. I'm saying it facetiously, but I mean that shit. Um, I'm tired of people being like, yo, man, I should have listened to you. Just listen from the beginning. This is the hedge fund. We're doing it for free. Um, so listen, number two, if you're looking to a safe space to invest in, we talked about it before, healthcare, Eli Lilly is one of my favorite companies. After that, if you choose to do Johnson & Johnson, fine, but Eli Lilly is like an amazing company that you should invest in. Um, three, you have to learn how to trade because, and I said it at InvestFest, if you have a job, there's nothing wrong with that. And truth be told, most people that work jobs make more than most entrepreneurs. So don't let people shame you um, about having a job. But most people are trading time for money. So if you don't have your money working for you in some capacity, you are in a, one of the worst trades of your life. So you have to learn how to, if you go back to episode 70, at least be a short-term investor to know how to make moves in this market. Um, put yes in chat if like over the last year, you've got better at trading and now this market is here and you are elated to be able to take advantage of these moves as the market is falling down. Okay, look at all those yeses. Shout out to y'all. That's fire. That's what I'm saying. That's the education part, right? Now you can actually apply that education that you learned. You don't have to hoard it no more. Now it's time to deploy it. Yep. And then number three, um, build a base of maybe six assets that you want to invest in. And only, I wish we just had one episode sometimes. Apple, Microsoft, Lily, Google. If you want a volatility, NASDAQ, Russell 2000, Russell 1000, get that bad kind of play. Tune into the episode. Tesla's that. Hey, that's the anthem. And then pick one dark horse. That may be Bitcoin. That may be Ethereum. Uh, you guys should go Google the article about what JP Morgan was saying post-merge. Pretty interesting. Focus on those six, put in. And then also, like most people that are hurting right now, they are realizing that they bought too high. Um, and if you do those things, you'll be fine. You don't need a whole bunch. And now if this changes, and let's say we're in another decade, there's always going to be a lead in four. Pick those four. In the 1980s, it was IBM and Chevron and U.S. Steel and, you know, uh, in the 50s, it was Sears and Roebuck and, da -da -da, you know, there's always going to be some leaders in the category. So just find those and then just continuously pour into them. And you'll be fine. Investing is really easy, man. Um, it's all the people who don't want you to win who make it complicated. Yeah. They don't love you. We do. Nope. We love you. Yeah. I'll add to it, Ian, because we, we went over, you said healthcare. I keep talking about it. I don't know if anybody's paying attention, but consumer staples, man. Like if you look at even today, like today, it, I mean, out of the few things or, or ETFs that was positive, consumer staples were. Um, and I know we, we spoke about this with uh, Aristotle, shout out to him last week's episode, but dividend paying stocks, you know, because I know people are like, well, you got to have a lot of money to do it, but get in the habit. You got to pick the right ones too. You got to pick the right one. And we, we gave out a bunch of them. Walgreens is a, is a great one. Uh, he, he do said, not touch AT&T. He said the Altria Group, which is, is a great one. Verizon, uh, P&G. P&G is inside of good. This is going to be staples. So these are things like getting in the habit of putting your money in safe places and watching the money grow, even if it, the dividend pays 25 cents, it's more than the bank is going to pay you, right? Mm -hmm. So get in the habit of doing that. Put it in safe spaces. Understand where, where it's going. Understand some of these companies. That's one of the things, like when we talk about ETFs, look inside of them, right? Look at the top three asset allocations inside of them. Do the research on them. See what the companies have to offer. I mean, this is the safest way to do it in, in times like this. And for those of you that are in financial services too, um, I've been getting more calls from Capital One now than ever about the, the savings rate. I'm not going to say it's a little, but because um, they are beating majority of what people are offer. For those of you that have been selling insurance, safety, indexes, mutual funds, anything that's boring, now's the time to really advertise. People would die for 3% return right now. Guaranteed 3% in anything for all everyone else that's like in alternative markets. I'll call them that. Boy. <laughs> Beat the pavement, don't get caught. These are just jokes. <laughs> Written by 85 South. Shout out to Chad, DC Fly Lows. Um, but now if you have to know what season you're in. So when you have a market, when everyone's promising 15, 18, 20% in real estate and 30, 40, 50% in stocks, you have to wait and sit the sidelines. Uh, but if, and I've said it before, the first company that is able to get 20% return Every year for 10 years will be a trillion dollar company. I'm going to make sure the rebellion is the first one to do it. 
But if you can be very smart in your asset allocation and your timing, you won't have any issues. And I'll say this again about AT&T. Please don't touch AT&T. They are at a, well, they're right at the 2008 low. Uh, me personally, if it got to maybe, I don't know, $7, I would swing it. But AT&T has been, AT&T high was in 1999. Like, think about that. The last time AT&T hit a high, juvenile, Han was on fire. Mm. You a baby jizz, right? No, let it go. I know some of y'all like the dividend play, but you need a dividend where the stock goes up. It sounds good in theory until you put your money in it and it's sliding down. So please be careful. And for, for the most part, telecom isn't the best sector of stocks to invest in. A great business to be in, but the sector normally isn't that good. Yeah, I, I did that in 2007, I invested in Verizon, just because I was paying them every month. And then yeah. that's what I learned about. Oh, they have dividends too? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm with you on that. What should we do if we enter a depression or a... Uh flat decade for returns we talked about it before and it's going to be really hard but this is where the empire builders and the rulers of the next generation are going to come from if we uh, get a half decade or a full decade of flat i want to see who is still going to load the boat or who's going to buy every month if you go look at microsoft's chart when bomber was there which is like one of the greatest fumbles of all time i, I could argue if Balmer was a better leader, there would be no Apple today. Um, they had a 10 year spell. Let me go back to the charts. The high in 2000 was 52.46. Not until 2016 that they break that high. Now, of course they still had Enterprise on lock. Great team, great employee base still great market share think about the people who added a thousand shares every month no matter what for that 10-year period mm -hmm. home run like i had one lady in stock club she would never come on it's like never i'll never come on market money zone want to know she's been buying amazon stock since 1998 or something she said two thousand shares a month when i saw that account balance i was like look like the damn national debt billboard that's in the land of by cnn but it was like, just continue to build. And that's the great part about, um, especially as being an entrepreneur, you're not going to always have your breakout moment in year one, year two, year three. It may be that fifth year or that sixth year. Like I put up in the reel today, like some of the stuff I was posting, I posted 14 years ago on Facebook. Shout out to Facebook. I know y'all tired of me really long. <laughs> um, but it may be that sixth year when things take off and now you have an accumulation of assets and ultimately you want to get to that 10,000 share Point in a company that you believe in and it's not just about believing in it but do the other banks believe in it do the other institutions believe in it do they have market share um i don't want you to put your belief in rivian that's hope if they turn the company around and get a great executive or the same before it like ford when they had alan malali great ceo helped turn around for a couple of years but ford historically is disappointed if you just go look at that 20-year chart it'll tell you whether or not you should invest in it or not. If it's not going up and to the right, leave it alone. But if we hit a flat season, a depression or decade, you're going to have to find an asset class or company to pile all your money in and wait those five or six years if it's truly about generational wealth. Once again, if you want generational wealth, you're going to have to hold for a generation. Some, some people want to hold for a week. Can't do it. Can't do it. You have to sacrifice. And, if some, and, and just think about it like this. Imagine if two people in your family sacrificed for you for 50 years, how much further ahead you'll be. Why not do it for someone that you love? This, this day. Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day. Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's this good? Day. Red Panda Anthem. <laughs> your boy. Going up. I know they can't stand it.